Well, good morning again. It's great to be with you today and to spend some time in God's Word. Uh, Pastor Mercer here with you. This is your devotion for uh, Wednesday, December December 6th. Uh, we continue reading in Isaiah. We'll be in Isaiah chapter 14 today. And um, <clears throat> our psalm today is uh, portions of Psalm 56. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We turn to Psalm, Psalm 56, beginning with verse 1. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. Verse 5. All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife. They lurk. They watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape. In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. And now we turn to Isaiah chapter 14. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will again choose Israel and will set them in their own land and sojourners will join them and will attach themselves to the house of Jacob. And the peoples will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them in the Lord's land as male and female slaves." They will take captive those who were their captors and rule over those who oppressed them. When the Lord has given you rest from your pain and turmoil in the hard service with which you were made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, the insolent fury ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers, that struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses rejoice at you, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were laid low, no woodcutter comes up against us. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you, all who were leaders of the earth. It raises from their thrones all who were kings of the nations. All of them will answer and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, the sound of your harps. Maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms are your covers." How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, 
who did not let his prisoners go home. All the kings of the nations lie in glory, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out away from your grave like a loathed branch, clothed with the slain, those pierced by the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a dead body trampled underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land, you have slain your people. May the offspring of evildoers never more be named. Prepare slaughter for his sons because of the guilt of their fathers, lest they rise and possess the earth and fill the face of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord of hosts, and will cut off from Babylon name and remnant, descendants and posterity, declares the Lord, and I will make it a possession of the hedgehog and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, a good portion of this reading today, dear saints, is this taunt that uh, the, the, um, the Holy Spirit, through the words of Isaiah here, tells the people that they're going to take up this taunt against the king, uh, the king of Babylon, who will be utterly... Uh, it makes it very clear here that to be utterly destroyed, utterly put down, utterly cast down. In fact, at the end of the reading today, uh, God says, and I will sweep it with the broom of destruction. How about that uh, for, some, uh, for some language there? Uh, sweeping with the broom of destruction, making everything go away sweeping it away just as uh, when you think about it when I'm sweeping I was sweeping my garage out a couple of days ago and just uh, uh, the the dust and everything that builds up and just sweeping it away this is the picture that we get how God uh, makes can make nothing of these kings and these that say I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Now, of course, we know that when we read this scripture, starting there at verse 12, this can allude to, uh, uh, to Lucifer as well. But it's, it's also speaking of the fall of, of sinful mankind, the arrogance and folly of man that sets himself up above all things, above God, uh, makes himself his own God, believes that he has this security in himself uh, and um, he is the one. Man is the one that has ascended and is able to ascend, uh, uh, ascend and make himself higher than anything else. Well, when we think about this, this is really nothing new. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, as Scripture tells us. And certainly this idea of, of uh, the, the old Adam wanting to be the one that's in the driver's seat all the time, uh, nothing, nothing new here. The... Um, and this, certainly, when we look at the scripture too, we can see that uh, this, is, this is speaking of our time as well, that those, there are those who uh, set themselves up and, and believe that uh, they uh, ascend, uh, ascend to the heavens, that they, uh, anyone that's in authority in our world today, but the, the kingdoms will be laid low, um, that God is the one, as I said a couple of days ago, God is the one who appoints kings, who appoints rulers. He is the one that places them in their places of authority. And for them to not, to, to not see this and recognize, recognize this, that they've been given this authority by God, therefore they should justly rule uh, and... and uh, 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 just justly rule their subjects. Well, um, we see the result of this um, because because of sin. Sinful mankind continues 
in his arrogance and his folly uh, to set himself up above God. And God here had promised at the beginning of this reading too that he would restore Jacob. Again, this is that language that we hear that being brought back, being brought into the promised land. Well, we know that we are the, the Israel today, the God's church here on earth, uh, that, that because of, of, uh, of, of Christ's exodus, then you and I have been set free from the bondage of sin, death, and the devil, and he's brought us now into his reign, into his kingdom, which will have, which will have no end. When we look at this again, we see this, uh, when I, we speak of this folly and, and um, of, of sinful mankind, of rulers, if we look at the first commandment, we see, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. The second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse swear, use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. And so we can't forget the third commandment here as well. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. The first three commandments for us to, uh, to put God, fear, love, and trust in God above all things, above all that we do. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A blessed, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> a blessed Wednesday to you. Uh, God be with you now that... Uh, You've made it all almost uh, halfway through the week here. I pray that uh, you'd have a, a blessed rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow.